Got here my good tea over here. I need to drink some um, nice green tea before I start. All right, uh, part three of the forensic series. Um, not sure if it's gonna go to part four, but um, part three definitely. Um, I wanted to make part three. I want to discuss um, mostly court uh, things. You know, going to court and all that stuff. What you need to know, what you gotta be prepared for. And I'm gonna touch a little bit on the report writing. So. Let's say you've been uh, a forensic investigator now for a few years and finally the time has come, you're going to have to go to court. Now, um, when, I, when I started doing this um, about 11 years ago, for the first few years there was no court. I, most of my reports were good enough, they were submitted to court and case was either dismissed or my client was set free or whatever the case might be. Um, that's what usually happens. And eventually, um, I ended up being uh, summoned to go to court for a case. Uh, I think it was in 2014 or 2015. It was uh, it wasn't a criminal case yet. It was um, I think it was just uh, just a regular court. But anyways, I was a little bit um, you know intimidated because you know you go, you go into court. I've never been to court where I've been on the stand and and all that stuff. So it was okay. It went through fine. You know, the, the, there was some back and forth between me and the, uh, the opposition with the lawyer, but um, the judge saw that the lawyer is being um, un unreasonable, so he, he told him to drop the questioning because it was just, it was something stupid, like he was trying to compare, saying that uh, one email client is not the same as the other, but, but what I was trying to tell him is fundamentally email is all the same underneath. So there was no point in arguing over this, it was just a stupid argument, so... Um, that was that. So then I had a talk with Scott Moulton. I don't know if you, if you know who Scott Moulton is. He's a forensic investigator plus a data recovery expert. He's, he runs a company out of Georgia. So I had a talk with him. We had to discuss a little bit. Uh, I want to ask him some questions about court. And he said, next time you're in the situation, all you got to do is if they ask you these, these questions, you respond with a question. And uh, the next case I was involved in, I was almost in, the, in an identical situation. And uh, obviously I reply with a question. And the lawyer didn't know how to answer me next. One thing you have to keep in mind. When you're in court and, uh, and the prosecutor or whoever is asking you questions, they already know the answer. They're not asking you because they want to know. They want to know what, you, what you're going to say. Because, I mean, your report, you've written your report, right? So they already know these answers. They don't, they're not asking you just to ask you. They really want to know, see if you make a mistake and, and things like that. So, you know, you also have to keep in mind that you gonna be the smartest person at the time in court when it comes to that specific subject. So if you're there and they're asking you question, questions, just make sure you answer what you wrote in your report. So be mindful what you write in the report. I mean, I always tell people, you know, put everything you found in the case in the report, but then you also have to be careful because you can make a mistake and they'll catch you on it quickly because they're gonna have opposing experts uh, looking through your report. So I had uh, someone who um, had an opposing expert look through my report and instead of attacking me on the, on the um, on my findings, he, he did a personal attack. So case was dismissed because, you know, if you have nothing to attack the opposition on, you best not to attack, attack them personally. So uh, a personal attack is uh, in, not something you should be doing if you're an expert and you and you uh, you know reviewing another expert's uh, testimony or or the report because then you makes you look kind of stupid. But yeah, that's what happens with these reports. So and in courts. So when you're in court, uh, if you do kind of catch yourself making a mistake, I had a case, I was in high profile case out of another, another province, and I've noticed when, when the, the defense side, when they were grilling the, um, the person that was on the stand, he made a mistake. Now, instead of owning the mistake, um, he kept arguing with the, uh, with the lawyer, for the defense lawyer, and he kept going and going, and I thought, this is the stupidest thing ever. This went on for an hour. Instead of admitting, hey, listen, I, 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 instead of looking at your report and saying, ah, I see the mistake, uh, I see what you're trying to get at, yeah, I could have I done this another way. But instead, he kept arguing with, with the lawyer and it made him look stupid. Uh, when it came to me testifying, um, I had to answer a question. Um, there was a report that I had to read. And the, the way it was written, it wasn't written... Uh, clear enough for anyone to understand because there was few of us on the on the expert uh, as expert witness on this case So we were on the same team and as we were talking to um, As we we're being asked the questions what what happened is all, all of us made the same mistake because the, the way the sentence was written didn't make any sense and 
me instead of arguing with the, the lawyer, I said, you know what, this sentence doesn't make sense. I didn't want to argue with the with the persecution. There was no point uh, because I the sentence was written so badly that it just didn't make any sense. And there was another mistake that I've done in my report where I I I, um, I guess I I was right what I said, but the way I written the sentence it didn't make sense. So when the prosecution was going through my report, say, oh, you written this and this and that. You know, this doesn't sound correct. And I and I took my report a while on the stand and I read it, read my sentence, and I said, and I said, ah, I get it. I could have written it differently. The point I was trying to get across was this. I just didn't put it on paper correctly. But let me let me correct it now and say, and I said what I had to say. Um, like I, I have to say it in code a little bit because I can't discuss the actual case because it's. Uh, uh, it's still privileged information, so I can't uh, say it in a YouTube video because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, especially if you sign non-disclosure agreements, which I talked about in the previous videos. Uh, you can't be um, uh, talking about it in, in a YouTube video, obviously. So yeah, court is not too bad. I mean, it's uh, you're going to find yourself with, uh, with uh, lawyers that are going to try to grill you and try to put you against the wall. Just stick to what you wrote in your report. Don't deviate uh, because you, you're the expert, so you shouldn't be deviating from your expert opinion. If your opinion is um, A, B, and C, you can be talking about D, E, and F. Uh, you know, so you're gonna have to stick to what you said originally in your report. Now, if you're wrong, you can correct yourself, but you have to explain why. But overall, co court appearances are a good ex good experience. Um, I, I do enjoy going to court. It's it's um, it's. It's a great experience. You get to see the whole court proceedings. Now, they might not let you sit the entire case because a lot of times there could be other experts talking. So you, so you, you are not supposed to be in contact with the other experts, uh, or actually, well, you can be in contact. You just can't hear their testimony because that might influence you. So they might, that, they might make you also leave during other testimonies because you're not supposed to be hearing uh, all the evidence. Um, you, 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 you kind of have to be impartial to everything. All you got to do is talk about what you found, your findings. And, um, and answer questions in court. So usually when you go to court, uh, the first thing is, uh, if you're working for defense, the defense is gonna ask you questions first. That's gonna be very simple because it's, uh, you know, they're not grilling you. It's they, you are on as their experts, so they're gonna be asking you all the questions. And then after that, the, the prosecution might, might get, get a um, whack at you, as, as to say, and then they're gonna be asking you a lot of questions and they're gonna be hard on you. Uh, so you gotta be, you gotta know your, you know, you gotta know your stuff. You can't, um, uh, you can't be guessing. You, you gotta watch the word you use. Uh, you can't say, oh, I think that. You, you have to be really specific uh, as you're talking about certain evidence. You have to say, I know that this and this happens. You can't just say, oh, I think this happens. You can't. These are not the words you can be using. Now, it's different for everyone. Uh, I'm only speaking from my personal experience. So, uh, I know some of you who've been to court as experts, you might have a different opinion on this, but I'm only discussing my side and how uh, I dealt with it when I was in court. So that that's pretty much covers the court. I want to just touch on the reports. When it comes to reports, um, the procedure is the most important. You have to just discuss the procedure itself. So if, if you have evidence coming in, just discuss what the case is about, uh, your mandate, uh, you can you can talk about your, um, uh, just just write everything down. Like the whole, whatever you started from. So if you, if you, if you receive the, let's say it was a hard drive, you receive the drive, recall the serial numbers, take photos, write all the steps you took, forensic imaging, make sure you, 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 um, you mentioned that you did, uh, you use a write blocker, you take hash values, use your hashes, explain what everything is. Remember, whoever's reading the report is stupid. And I don't mean they're just stupid because they're stupid. What I mean is they don't understand these things. You have to be, you, imagine you're telling your parents about this. So you have to make it, very easy to understand. Don't make it too complicated because one of my first few reports were way too complicated. People didn't understand. You might you might lose you, uh, you might lose as an expert if you're not uh, simple enough. Like remember, judges uh, when they're reading the reports or whatever, they, they they don't know anything about computers. So you have to simplify it as much as you can. I I always keep it as simple as I can. So. Uh, you know, you might have to explain what a hard drive is. I mean, I had a case where I had to explain um, file system structure and then what certain things mean. I had to really, really explain it uh, because if someone's reading it, they need to understand. Right? Some people might not even know what a file system is. You got to tell them, well, file system is what it is, right? 
so obviously these are the things you have to keep in mind that people who read these reports they're not um, they're not technically savvy now that I mentioned the judge also I had a case where I was in court and, and I remember they asked me about uh, how are text messages deleted what happens to them and I um, this was back in 2017 and I started talking all oh, the SMS uh, SQL databases this and I looked over the judge and she was like uh, she was lost and I thought holy crap I am way too technical so I, I start I start using analogies where I mention you know the SMS databases imagine it's like, imagine it like a book and then you have uh, SQL records they're like index and the messages are the pages so you just have to be mindful of who's reading and make sure they, they understand what you're talking about so anyways, this will be part three. Uh, I pretty much covered all the topics. I'm sure I might add to this eventually in some other videos. Um, definitely, I'm not sure what other topics I would cover in forensics. Um, this is one of the mo more important ones. I think um, uh, court appearances are, are, are um, definitely going to be hard for some, some of you who go into forensics for the first time. Uh, but just remember, you are the expert. You're going to be the smartest person in that room uh in this field so you just have to be mindful of everyone in there make sure you explain everything my problem is i speak way too fast so i have to control myself when i talk i have to speak very slowly even right now i'm speaking way too fast so um it's just the way i am but i in court i'm i'm okay i uh, i slow it down and i explain everything so yeah make sure you like and follow uh for more content i'm definitely gonna make more forensic content because people do seem to like this um um Leave me a comment below. Tell me what uh, what, you, what what else you, you would like to see, uh, and I'm gonna see if I can fit that in the next few videos. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.